Hello, I'm Michael Goodman, professional 9 down Go player. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the ninth in Cup that was played. Uh, the first and second rounds were played in September 8th and 9th, uh, 2020. And so, in particular, I'm going to be showing you some games played by the Japanese players. To start with, the Ink Cup is a four yearly event sponsored by the late Ng Changi. And so um, the games are played according to the Ing rules, which is a set of rules that would, were, you could say, invented by Ing. And the idea is that they were made to avoid draws by unplayable positions. So there are some very special positions in Go that uh, can cause a draw because the game cannot be continued. And so the Ing rules uh, were designed to um, avoid that kind of thing. And they also have a slightly different counting system with an 8-point komi, which amounts to the same thing as a 7.5-point komi in Japan, or the standard uh, komi in the Jap Chinese rules also. Uh, the timing is different also with 3 hours of basic time, but there's no overtime unless you buy it by paying with 2 points. So you actually pay uh, 2 points to get 20 minutes of time in this particular um, in this ninth tournament, that's the rules. And you can do it twice, so you can go on to a maximum of 3 hours and 40 minutes by um, buying time twice. But that's the limit. After that you run out of time and forfeit the game. I don't think the players um, took that long in this particular, the first and second rounds at least. So the sponsor is the Im Chanchi uh, Weichi Educational Foundation, which is a foundation spon that was founded by Ing. To start with uh, the overview of the whole tournament, there were 12 players from China, 7 for Korea, uh, 6 from Japan, 3 from Taiwan, 1 from America, and 1 from Europe. So with 12 players, China might seem to be overrepresented, but um, I should say there were two seated players, one from China, one from Korea who were the finalists of the previous tournament. And also there's the fact that there's a, um, a lot of Chinese players who have some time of being world champions. So in general, the Chinese players are doing very, very well in the interna international tournaments. Um, so that would sort of explain to me why there are so many Chinese players. And I'm going to focus on some games played by Japanese players. I'm going to start with a game that um, Japan lost, uh, but it was a kind of a star player for Japan because Shibano Toramaru, who is um, he has the Meijin title, one of the biggest titles in Japan. Um, Yama Yuta was also playing, um, but I'll show you the game that was played by Shibano Toramaru against Yan Jinqing from China. Okay, so this is a very modern opening with the big Shimari in the lower right. And this move is a very recent development, I think. Um, it wasn't played so much before, uh, but this move has been researched with computer programs recently. So it's, you could call it an AI, a new AI Joseki. Um, and quite often you, uh, I've seen White Bean playing this move, um, but in this game White played the extension to the right, to the left that is. Um, that looks like a reasonable move also. And so black plays away at this point. Uh, locally, uh, this this move would give white give black a uh, life in the corner, or this move will make a base on the side. So black can afford to play away now. Black jumps into the three three point. Uh, so very modern. This double hane here is a, a joseki that I would suggest to players who want to keep it simple. So if you've played the star point and your opponent has jumped into the three three point. Um, it's okay to play this double hane. It makes it relatively simple. And nowadays people jump into the 3-3 point when you haven't even played an extension to the side. So there is some merit in having a living, posi a living position just in the corner here and having some territory there when you have not invested a move towards the side yet. And so this is a relatively easy to play variation. So in every corner we see something that is pretty modern. There's this, well, the um, the variation of the three-three point itself is uh, has been around a long time, but usually 
uh, the three three point is not played that early, so I'd call that a modern joseki. Um, in the lower left, that's a, a nude position, and the upper right also that that kick that Black played. And this move is a move that we used to think was not so the exchange was maybe not so good, but um, with computer programs giving Black a good score when Black kicks there, it has become more popular. And then there's this Shimari in the lower right, which is also um, very modern. It was not so popular until actually AlphaGo showed it to us and, and showed how to play continue with it. And so White, White makes this strange slide. It's um, amazing how Go has changed so much recently, in recent years, just since AlphaGo, in the last five years. And actually, this position is a uh, shape. Um, in a Tesuji problem, you would probably usually see it with the cut already in, and black surrounding white stones on the upper side, because the Tesuji that uh, would you, you would usually find in a textbook would be black cutting here. And white would push through, black would be able to cut white off this way. Because otherwise, if white takes the one stone, this would just be worse. Uh, this would be just worse for white. So white would push through, and black would cut white off. So in the textbook, in the textbook version, um, maybe black would be surrounding these white stones and they would immediately die when black broke through her. So it would be very effective. But in this actual game position, if black does that, maybe not so effective because white's already alive in the corner and now white has a tempo um, to play something. Maybe white will play something on the side like this to move out with that white stone. Uh, you can see that when black loses a tempo, that it's probably not so effective. So black extended down first, white cut, and black played this move. So for the time being, um, it, it, uh, black could have squeezed. It would have been a completely different variation here. Uh, this could have been something like a ko, actually. For instance, if this happens, it's going to be a ko in the corner. But white might not even play that final, uh, final move. It's going to be a ko anyway. Um, in the game, black extended down. So this avoids the ko. If white takes these two stones, now black has a number of ways to win. Black could play here. Uh, black wins by pushing from behind. Or black could play here and push from this side. Black wins the, the race to capture in any case. So white cannot capture the two stones. White backs off. And we have this position where it looks like uh, at some point, a ko could happen in the corner, but so that's maybe or maybe not. It's a difficult ko for either side to start. Um, so it's sort of um, hard to say definitely, but usually black's going to capture these three white stones and white's going to have this territory here. So it's that kind of a trade. And black had sente and placed the, the cap. So when black caps here to attack on the right side, uh, that potential ko in the corner it's sort of, for instance, if white were to throw in on, at the 1-1 one, one point, it would be a bit dangerous for white too. And it's not all that important, so it's not going to happen in the near future. So this is the main point of my commentary of this particular game. Um, white's move here is a very common way for white to attack the two-space corner enclosure that black has. Black covers on the star point, the very natural move, and white plays here. So if black plays on the outside, white's going to have room to live in the corner. Black um, played the wedge here, and white plays the hanging connection. Black cuts in the corner. This is a necessary move if black had played here, uh, white would just live in the corner. That's a nice, a nice territory in the corner for white. So this is where Shibano played, uh, Shibano was black in this game. He played a very natural looking move, which was this one. This is the kind of move that strong players will play just on autopilot. It's, it's a natural move, it's the shape move. But in this game it turned out to be uh, maybe a losing mistake. Um, it was a, a mistake that gave white a, a, a distinct advantage. 
So white played here, and the point is that white this move, white had this move. Um, maybe Shivano actually overlooked this, but it was a very effective move. So to go back and say what white black should have done, black should have simply connected. Um, like this is um, a weaker player might have played the connection automatically. It's an Atari, but um, this is the shape move that a strong player would tend to want to play. It would have been better for black to connect here. And white will either push through or play a honey underneath. So it's one of these two. If white plays a honey underneath, in this case, actually, white does not have room to live. It's six stones in a row on the second line. And that's a position that is not alive yet. Um, so if white plays something like this, for instance, it's just going to die. In actual play, white would continue with this. And if black connects here, uh, white's going to be able to make a second die in the corner. So that would be a lie. In actual play, black will not connect. And it's going to be a ko. It's uh, like if we play out the ko, it would be like this. Even this would be good enough for black, playing two, two moves on the outside. Uh, black might not actually continue with 13, but this is the easy to understand sequence that can follow. And it's, it's good enough for black in itself. So when black connects here, um, the honey underneath is maybe a bit problematic for white. Probably better for white to push through. And something like this. Black 7 is the shape to connect up. White jumps out. White might continue with something like this. And so it's not as if white's going to die there. But black is getting territory on the right side, in the lower right corner. As black attacks, and black will have some hopes to maybe make some territory on the lower side. Black has potential to attack on the lower side too. So it's an active game for black. And overall I'd say it's, it's hard to say who's ahead. It's probably pretty close. So that would have been not bad for black. But in the game black played here, now if white manages to live erasing the whole left side, this would be a success for white. If black goes down here, there's just no way for black to save those two stones. Like if black goes like this, they're dead anyway. There's no way to connect up to the upper right. So otherwise, uh, you could consider this move, which does sort of cut white off, but in the process, white's going to live with Sente on the side. So that was easy for white. Also, there's the fact that um, black's next move is a bit uh, not so satisfying. Like if black plays an Atari here, white will actually run out. And um, there's just so many cuts and things here. Uh, just so much bad Aji. White doesn't even have to continue at this point. Uh, white might uh, switch to the, the corner or something like this. Um, or white could save those stones on the right side. That would not be an optimal result for black. Um, so it would actually be clearly not as good as the, the variation I was showing you with black connecting here it would not be that good. So in the game, black takes one from the third line and actually starts this call here, which looks a bit desperate for black, um, but it, um, it leads to this call. And this call is going to be interesting. Both players have call threats. We'll just uh, go through the moves to see what how the call turned out. So they continue the code to this point. White takes the code. So at this point, black has one more code threat that is uh, white is going to answer. There's no question that white is going to answer this code threat in the upper left. White also has a code threat here, which black has to answer in the lower right. So they have one um, forcing code threat each. So uh, white doesn't have any extra code threats. So if white answers black's next code threat, when black plays, when black plays here, if white answers this, white's going to lose the call. So this is where white finished the call, and it turns out that this was, I'd like to call it a decisive advantage for white. I think white has a distinct advantage at this point, and actually the game did continue for a while and it was pretty exciting, but I think most of the time white had an advantage after this. And it was in, in this fight on the right side 
that White took that advantage. So for this game, I'm just going to finish here um, and call it a win for White. And I would like to continue with one more game from the first round, um, a game in which a player representing Japan called Kyokagen uh, won the first round. Okay, this is a game between Kyokagen, uh, representing Japan, he's an eight don, and Dang Yihei from China. So at this point, uh, just uh, I'm going to start with this middle game position. Black has very solid, nice territories in, in these two areas. And white has a territory here on the lower side. Uh, black does have this corner territory. Um, black seems to have a slight advantage in territory. So I would say that, um, and also I should mention that this white group, um, it's pretty much alive. It's not going to be killed. So I would call it a live group. So, and, and these black stones, they're, um, the black stones in the center of the board here, they are a little bit weak, but they can be they can be handled. It's not as if it's an immediate danger. So this is a point in the game where Black seems to have a slight advantage, uh, but he continued. Uh, Black was uh, Kyokagen. He continued in the most aggressive manner. So in this peep here, uh, a very strong, uh, sharp move, Black is going to attack White on the upper side and use that attack to settle all of the problems that Black has in the center of the board. So this is a very sharp attack that Black is trying. It's very typical of, I think it's his style, Kyokagen's style, to play this kind of very um, exciting manner. And actually, it turns out Black is going to be able to connect here, although it looks so dangerous with Black rolling on the second line. Um, Black plays the Hane here. If White covers on the second line, on the 2-2 point, Black will cut here and get a squeeze. We call this the tombstone squeeze because the shape that white gets into here when white connects, it resembles the shape of a Japanese tombstone. So in, in this position, actually black's going to easily win because white has only three liberties left. And black's group here, if we play the white Atari and have black connect, that has five liberties. So black easily wins this. And white cannot capture the two stones. So if we go back, uh, maybe white could connect, but that's not accomplishing very much. Um, Black's connected up. So in the game, white pushes through. And black cannot cut yet. If black cuts here, even if white just curls around, um, now white will have four liberties in the corner, and black has four liberties on the side. So white's going to fill first and, and win this set, this fight. So black covers on the second line. Now white cannot continue to cut black off, because if white plays here, Black cuts here. And if we play this Atari, we can see that Black has four liberties left. And White has only three. So Black's going to win this one. So White backs off, and Black connects. And Black is going to continue the attack here. This is still a point where I would say um, it looks slightly better for Black. So I would be tempted to play some kind of solid move like this. But no, uh, Kyokagen is going to attack very strongly here. And this is a move I wanted to show you. This move is sort of going to just demonstrate, if black makes a mistake here, it's going to demonstrate how when you connect on the first line, people tell you that connecting on the first line like this is not good. And that is because very quickly you can lose all of your liberties in that shape. So this is sort of going to demonstrate that if black connects on the fourth line here. This is, this is going to, going to be bad for black because white's going to curl around and white's going to throw in here. So when white throws in here, um, first of all, if black connects on the left. Um, in these positions where you've connected on the first line, sometimes you want to connect on one side or the other. But in this case, it's going to be a co in the corner. This is not a direct co, but it is very dangerous for black. If black loses the co, black's going to lose these stumps. So black doesn't really want to do this co, but if black takes on this side, now white just throws in and throws in all over. In this position, the most likely result after this is that white's going to get these two stumps. 
and that's going to be a living shape. So, for instance, um, if black is if black wants to save these four stones, for instance, the way black does it is black plays uh, fills the liberty, white takes black backs off like this. This would just be a complete failure for black because white's completely alive on the upper side and black's attack has not succeeded. So white would continue with something in the center and black would start getting into trouble there. In actual play, uh, black would not continue after this, but um, the most likely result, as I say, is that white will capture the two stones because if black connects here and tries to save everything, this is going to be a uh, disaster. Black loses everything. So black's not, not able to do that. So it was correct for black to cover here. This solves all the problems. It's not going to allow white to extend liberties if white takes black and just connect underneath. If white goes down, now, now white has only two liberties and, um, and black has three liberties just here. So um, what I was showing you before is not going to work for white. So the fight continued. And it's going to get very, um, very sharp in the center of the board also because black's not making it easy for white. And it's going to be dangerous for black too because when white cuts here, now this black group, it looks like it's in trouble. So the white group here is just dead. It can make maybe one eye at this point. So it looks pretty dead, very dangerous. But the black group here also, this black group is surrounded and basically it doesn't have room to live. So just to show you a variation where black tries to live, that would be this one. But white can actually kill it with this. And, um, oh sorry, not that way. White can actually kill it with this and white's liberties in the center extend once. So white can, can win that. So black's group here is just dead. Let's take it off the board just to demonstrate that. So, but uh, obviously Kyokagen knew that and he found this move, which, well, he had prepared this move, obviously. This is the decisive move in this game, um, which is threatening to capture a number of white stones here. And so it's going to be a race to capture between those stones and the black group inside. If white connects here, if white connects here, black will push through once and continue with a race to capture here. So in this race to capture, white has only three liberties and cannot win the fight. If white tries to capture this black group, white's going to lose. Actually, white can save the group by pushing through here and capturing these four stones. So actually, uh, white wins this, but black will continue by playing an Atari um, and playing an Atari here, and black is alive in the center. So when black lives in the center, that means that this white group um, is, is just dead. So that group is dead and black will win the game. And an important point to notice is that when black forced white to play the stone at 11, that uh, gave black the move at, at 12, which connected up all black's stones on the outside. And so that's why this worked. Um, the, because black got to play 12 in the course of events, that surrounded white's group on the upper side. So that explains what black is doing with this peep. White plays an Atari, trying to change. So connecting did not work, but white plays the Atari. So what is this Atari trying to do? Well, if black connects here, white's going to connect here, making two empty triangles at once. But this is a very effective move because if black pushes through here, now white has four liberties and black has only three. So white's going to win this. Also, if black tries to fill a liberty, that's not going to work because white's going to push through here and we'll be able to connect here. And to go back to black trying to live in the center, that's not going to work either because white can extend his liberties once here and, and win the fight in the center too.
So nothing's working for black. Let's go back to the game position. So white plays an Atari here. If black connects, white's going to play here. Empty triangles, but white wins the center. So instead, so black cuts here. This is the point that white wanted to play. If white had played there in this variation, white wins the semi. -high. So this is, it turns out this was a key point. Now if white connects, now black will connect here. Now this is cutting white off in the center, and at the same time is threatening to capture these three stones. So white would like to save those stones. Uh, let's have white save those stones. But when black plays here, now, if we count white's liberties, um, it turns out white's lost a liberty here. Although white got an eye, uh, just one eye does not help. White only has three liberties and cannot capture black in the center. Actually, on the other side, white, white can escape still. White can uh, play the cut here and win the semi on that side. But again, it's the same story as before. When black lives in the center, when this group lives, it means that the white group is just dead. That white group is dead. Notice again that in the course of events, black black got to play this stone, and so black um, black is connected on the outside. So black started with the P pair. White countered with the Tari, and black had this move ready to refute that. And then white uh, simply took the one stone here. White actually managed to live inside. So squeezing the black group, white has this squeeze, uh, forcing black to connect there, and white can make another eye. So white lived, uh, but black has gained some extra points here in the center. Black has uh, the tempo still. So black just, um, now we enter the end game, black has a decisive lead. And in the process of events, you can see again that everything here, black has some weak stones here, and uncertain stones here, all of those problems have been resolved now. So black's perfectly okay um, in all of those positions. So that, that's a win for black. So to talk about the results of the first round, eight Chinese players uh, won the first round. Only two Koreans won the first round. Um, three Japanese won the first round. And one player from Taiwan won the first round. So that's a total of 14 players who won the first round, and there will be two more seeds in the second round to make 16 players, uh, nine Chinese, three Koreans, three Japanese, and one Taiwanese. So now I'd like to go, to, go on to show you uh, the, the single win that Japan had in the second round. Okay, uh, this is a game from the second round of the Ying Cup. Uh, the ninth in Cup, sponsored by Ying Chanji uh, Weichi Educational Foundation. And I'm going to start with this middle game position, which is, um, you can see it was a complicated game. And um, so I'll explain uh, what the position is like. It's Black's turn at this point. Uh, let's take a look at this white group in the upper, upper left first. This group in the corner alone, it is not completely alive. For instance, if black plays here and plays here, that is just one eye in the corner. But white has a second eye here um, on, on, on the upper side. So white can make a second eye there. And because of that, that white group is perfectly alive. So that's the white group in the upper left. There's a white group in the lower left area, this white group. It's not, um, it's a bit um, uncertain, but white uh, does have a lot of stones on the second line. There's a weakness in black's shape here when white plays this point. Um, the connection of black stones here to these stones, black has to uh, maintain that connection. So when white plays at the mark point, uh, there are some issues there for black. And of course, there's the cut here in the corner. Also, if black plays this move, there is a problem with white wedging here. And uh, for instance, in this variation, white captures the cornerstones. If black plays here, you can see there's um, a problem with black's connection. 
So there is that issue there where black is not uh, very well connected. And so that group on the, on the left there, it's more or less alive. Depending on how things develop, it could get, get into danger. And there's this white group in the center. Now this white group is a group that white has to be careful of because for the time being it doesn't have any eyes that are clear to see. I can't really point at any area and say that this is where white has eyes. White has potential to make eyes in this general area, but otherwise it's not alive. So that's a weak, uh, potentially weak group. And there's also this white group on the upper side. Uh, locally it's going to have, um, well obviously if white plays this point, white's going to connect up. Um, so that's one, um, an attack on this group would start with black playing the mark point. Let's get rid of this mark. And I'm just talking about the point at K18. And white would have one eye on the upper side, but would not have a second eye. So there's a potential attack against that white group. Um, and of course the, the white position on the right side, it's very unstable. Um, but since there are so many big groups all over the place that are unstable. Uh, this, this position on the right side, what happens to it is sort of secondary. It's going to be important pretty soon, but for the time being, white will be more worried about the, this group here and this group here. So those are the real concerns that white has. Black also has a weak group. So uh, first of all, there's this group, which is actually okay. But um, again, it's a position where it depends sort of on how black is connected up in this area. Black usually has an eye, um, maybe one eye in this area, and black has some space for eyes here. Um, if at any point um, black's position there in the center gets stronger so that black can push through here, um, then there's some potential to squeeze there on the left and make an eye. Um, in some cases, black will end up making an eye at this point. So um, there are various areas where black can make eyes. In actual practice, this group is going to be okay. But like it's the actual shape of how black's going to make two eyes can be a bit tricky sometimes. It's going to depend on how the game shapes up. The, the black group that I would really call weak is this black group in the center of the board. This group does not have two eyes. It doesn't really have any, it has a potential eye. So it, it will eventually have to connect up either in this direction or in this direction, in most cases. It's going to do one of those two things. So it's this one weak black group in between two weak white groups. White seems to have a potential lead in territory, so it looks almost like white is ahead, but there's a lot of fighting to, to, to continue with. So, for instance, uh, I, was, I mentioned uh, the wedge here that could be a problem for black when black extends in the corner. There's this wedge that white can use. And so when black peeps here, uh, there's that problem. There's also the fact that white can uh, peep here, threatening to cut in the third line. Or let's just have black play some other move. So let's say black plays some random move. Um, not a very good move elsewhere. There's various things that can happen to black in the, on the lower side. For instance, white can cut here and cut here and push through. This is a bit painful um, way for black to, to lose the territory on the lower side, and black would have to worry about the eyes of the entire black group in this case. So that's one thing that could happen. There's also the fact that if white wants to secure eyes for the group on the left, white can always peep here, uh, threatening to cut here on the third line. So that's another problem. So uh, black would actually like to get to this point, which would solve most of those problems. So black starts with the peep, very natural order of moves. But I would say that this connection that white played is probably slightly heavy. It would have been better for white to attach on the outside. And for instance, if black pushes through, then it's okay to connect. So like if black plays here, white could push through. Obviously this exchange of one for two, these two stones, uh, that's gonna make it easier for white to surround some territory or make a base on the lower side. That's a good exchange for white to have in before connecting at three. It makes sense. So white should probably attach here. Uh, black could push through here, but that's not a problem for white. White can just connect underneath. And white still has 
the potential connection here, which would give white a base on the lower side. And so this is perfectly fine for white on that side. In the game white connected, I think that's a, a little bit heavy maybe. And black continued with this. So black is securing a life for this black group here, um, just making it that much sure. And um, probably has ideas at some point that maybe he wants to extend here. There's still the problem with white wedging here, but um, maybe it's going to work out for black in some of the cases. So black is maybe thinking of that. And of course black is taking away eyes from this white group here. So hoping to attack later. This was a dangerous move that gave black an opportunity to play a very decisive attack. So I'm going to say that white should have started with this move. Um, this move is preparing to make two eyes by capturing the two black stones that would give white a living shape. And probably black is not going to answer it actually because answering here um, the exchange would be just so much, so much, so beneficial for white. Like if white could continue with something like this, having that exchange of one for two, it just makes everything that much more secure for white, and it would be relatively easy for white to connect up to the right. And that would, um, you have to remember, that would um, start attacking the black group in the center of the board. This black group is not secure. So maybe black would uh, not connect. But even if black does not connect, if white is secure here, like if black continues in this direction, then white could um, eventually connect up to this side. So that would resolve the problem of that white group on the upper side. Otherwise, if black uh, plays the connection here, in this case, white can probably connect up to the right. And that would um, put a lot of pressure of black in the center of the board. And so if white plays here, the, uh, the course of events would give white a kind of a flow of the stones that would allow white to live on the upper side. In the game white played here, and the problem with not having this exchange of a white stone at this mark point, and the problem is that uh, the two space extension there is sort of weak. So when black continued with this move, black at any point has can have ideas of playing here or playing here to cut off that two space extension. It's just too weak um, of a, a connection for white. So white actually immediately reinforced that, but that gave black two moves in a row on the right side. And these moves, these two moves, um, splitting white up on the right side is very important because it's going to put some pressure, it's going to put more pressure on this white group. And there's a potential, potentially huge black territory building on the right side. White's group um, here, this white group, it's still not alive. So you can see that, um, I would say that these two white stones were just not efficient enough. Uh, almost a wasted move there. So white continues here, and this trade ensued. But in this trade, I think black took a, a decisive advantage. Although white is getting some territory on the lower side, it's still open underneath. Uh, white cannot force with this point, so it's still open underneath. And white's group on the upper side, um, like anything in this area, is going to be forcing for black. Uh, maybe a jump here. And it would force white to take on the upper side. White, black might even start with this and try to attack a little bit. Um, depending on how black does it, there's going to be a big black territory on the right side. So white actually continued with this move to reduce the black side, uh, black side territory and to reinforce white's group on the upper side. And the game continued something like this. So um, At this point, black is just taking a, a lead in territory. I'd say at this point it's pretty decisively good for black. And uh, so I, um, I'd like to finish by telling you how the second round went for the various countries. Um, China won five games, so they started the second round with nine players, and five of them won. Uh, with, for Korea, there was only one player who won, so they went from three players to, to one. 
and Japan also uh, had three players in the second round, only one player, uh, Ichiriki, as I showed you in this game. He, he won this game. He was the only Japanese player to win. And there was a Taiwanese player who, who won in, in the second round. So that's five Chinese players, a Korean player, and a Taiwanese player. Um, the third round is coming up on the 11th of September. And in a few days, I, would, I hope to be um, showing you a video about that also. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to have uh, notifications when I uh, post videos, uh, you should turn, you should enable the no notifications also. So thank you for watching.